Hello everyone. We will continue the topic debugging. And in this video, we will cover the debugging text drops. You all know, always I am saying one line text drop three most preferable text drop. We are always going to text drop three. But we have other desktop also. Suppose desktop one is there, desktop two is there, standard is there. So what is the meaning of all those desktop? We will cover all those things because as maximum people are asking, what is the purpose of other desktop? Can I set one desktop as by default? Can I rename those desktops? So all these questions will be answered into this particular video. So what I will do, I will go for a program. You can go for any program. It is totally your wish. Suppose I will go for a program in which we have the function module. We are displaying the output using ALD. It is totally your wish. Take any program. Suppose I am putting a breakpoint onto this function module. I am just executing the program. Suppose I am giving an input and I am clicking on to execute button. You all know I am always saying we need to go to desktop 3. Desktop 3 most preferable desktop. If I will go to desktop 3, by default what we are able to see in desktop 3. We have a vertical line. In the first vertical portion, we in the first vertical half, we have the code. In the second vertical half, we have the variable values. So what we are, what or what is desktop 3? In the desktop 3, we have two vertical portion. In the first vertical half, we have the code. In the second vertical half, we are able to see the variable values. And maximum people are comfortable in this way whenever they will debug. They want to see the code. They want to see the variable values in the vertical portion. And by default, desktop 3, it always, always show the code and the variable values in the vertical portion. Now, if I will go for desktop 1, you can see desktop 1, same by same as desktop 3. But by default, it is in horizontal. In the upper horizontal portion, you have the code. In the lower horizontal portion, you have the variable values. Suppose if I will click on to this internal table, you are able to see the internal table here. So just see what is desktop 1 and desktop 3. Desktop 1 by default, I am specifically using the word by default because we can change it also. Desktop 1 by default showing you in the horizontal. It is horizontal layout. Upper horizontal portion has the code. Lower horizontal portion has the variable values. But in desktop 3, it is all about your vertical layout. In the first vertical half, you have the code. In the second vertical half, you have the variable values. Now, suppose if I will go to desktop 1. Now, can I swap this? Swap means variable values in the upper horizontal portion and code in the lower horizontal portion. Yes, I can do that also. Suppose this is the option here, swap. If I will click here, you can see the variable values in the upper horizontal portion and code is in the lower horizontal portion because ultimately it is user preference. Some people like this kind of layout. Some people like another kind of layout while debugging. So it's totally your wish how the user wants to see. Suppose as of now it is in horizontal. Can I change it to vertical? Yes, I can change it to vertical. Suppose here if I will go maximize vertically. Have you seen? We have vertical. This variable values now here. Code is here. Can I swap also? Yes, I can swap also. Have you seen? It is now just looking like desktop 3. That's why I am specifically using the word by default. Desktop 1 by default it is in horizontal. Desktop 3 is by default is in vertical. 
but you can change the layout depends upon your preference, whatever you bought. So in this case, yes, now desktop one is looking like desktop three itself. Now, now what is desktop two? Desktop one, desktop two, it's clear. People are saying, okay, that is horizontal by default. That is vertical by default. We can change, we can swap, okay. But what is desktop two? Desktop two is very important, especially whenever someone asks you to debug the standard programs. Because at that time, how the flow of the program is going on, we need to check at that point of time. So how, how we will do that? Suppose if I will go to desktop 2. What is the name of the desktop 2? A map and screen stack. Here you are able to see the code. But here we have a map and screen stack. Suppose what is stack? You all know what is stack. Stack works on last in, first out. It means whatever is coming at the last, it will go out at the first. Suppose simple example. Suppose I am putting a tray. On top of that, I am putting one more tray. On top of that, I am putting one more tray. So I have three trays. Suppose if I want to pick the tray one, I cannot pick the tray one directly. I have to firstly remove the tray 3. Then I have to remove the tray 2. Then I can take the tray 1. So have you seen the tray 3 I put at the last position. But when I removed, it removed at the first. That's why we are saying last in, first out. So in the desktop 2, we are able to see the app and the screen stack. Suppose I will show you how we can see the stack and very useful desktop. Suppose I am coming out from the debugging. I am going for some input. I will go for execute. Before I will go for execute, you all know this is your selection screen or input screen. What is the number of selection screen or input screen? It is 1000. Suppose if I will go for system status and show you, you can see the screen number is 1000. Whenever you are clicking on to execute button, which event will trigger start of selection? I will go to execute. Now you will be able to see how desktop 2 is, how the stack is there, how the flow is there. I will go for desktop you can see firstly, what is the screen number? 1000. We have the which event is triggering start of selection. I will go to desktop. Now, we have this program. In this program, we are calling this function module. If I want to go inside this function module, which key you will press F5 because what is F5? F5 is step by step execution. Suppose I am doing F5. You can see I entered into this function module. Just see how the stack will be. Firstly, your screen number 1000. Then we have start of selection. Now we entered into another function module from this particular program. So if I will go to desktop 2, you will be able to see we have 1000 start of selection and now we have the function module and in real projects it is very very useful suppose if you want to check from where this function module from at what point this function module is triggering from where it is triggering you can simply go to desktop too suppose if i will go for start of selection i will click here i can easily see this function module is triggering from here it is at position two now we have position three. So see how the desktop two is helping you. Suppose you reached into a function module and you want to see from where it is calling. You have to go to desktop two and check how the stack is now. Now suppose now I'm inside the function module. If I will go to desktop three, suppose I will, I am going inside this function module. This is I'm inside the function module. Now, Suppose if I want to come 
out from this particular function module. You all know whenever you want to come out, which key you need to press F7, F7. So I am doing F7. Whenever I will do F7, have you seen I returned to the original program and now understand how the desktop 2 will be. You have 1000, you have start of selection, then you have function module. And then, then you again returned to the program. That's why we are saying last in first out function module added at the last, but it removed first. Now, if I will show you desktop 2, you can see the function module is not there because it removed because desktop to that step, function will remove from the stack because it called, we executed. Now, suppose if I'm scrolling down, suppose I'm clicking here onto this function module, reuse ALV grid display. I'm doing F8 suppose. Now, if I will go inside this function module, suppose I'm doing F5. Have you seen how the stack is increasing? Now I'm into this particular function module. This is how your desktop 2 and stack is working. Suppose if I will come out, you can see we have the output. Suppose I will go for another example to make you clear about desktop 2. Suppose in this program, we have the subroutines. Similarly, it's for screens also. Suppose from one program, you are calling another screens. In the future, you will learn module pool topic. In that, we are calling the screens. So which screen is calling? We can easily, easily check from the stack. That's why it is saying ABAP and screen stack. How the ABAP stack is, you have the program, you have the function module. If you have another thing and you are going inside that, the stack will increase. Suppose I'm running this program. I'm giving some input to this program. You can take any example in which you have function modules, subroutines, screens. You can see how the stack is. Now I will go to desktop three. You can see most preferable desktop. If I will go to desktop two, you can see we have thousand screen numbers start of selection. I will go to desktop three. Now you can see I'm on to first subroutine. If I will go inside this subroutine, if I want to go, what I will do F5. Now, if I will show you desktop two, have you seen it is clearly saying you are into subroutine get underscore and suppose if I want to come out from this subroutine, I will do F7. Whenever I will do F7, have you seen it is removed from the stack. Same thing is for others also. So how your stack is adding the things, how the things are removing from the stack and just see in real projects how it is useful. Sometimes because in the future, you will learn update function module. You will learn BTE topics at that time without the knowledge of desktop too. You will not even realize from where this particular thing is triggering. So what is the summary of this particular video? In this video, I told you that we are always saying desktop 3 most preferable. The reason is because maximum people are comfortable in seeing the things vertically. In desktop 3, by default, you are able to see the code in first vertical portion and variable values in the second vertical portion. In desktop 1, you are able to see the code in the upper horizontal portion and variable values in the lower horizontal portion this is the only difference by default. But you can go for swapping also, you can go for vertical also, you can go for horizontal also. So it does not mean that desktop one, you cannot behave like desktop three. You can behave like desktop three also because we have an option for vertical also. The major thing is about desktop two because desktop two will show you the stacks how the various things are calling, how the flow of the program is going on, what are the various objects calling into that particular program. Then I showed you then how the stack, a map and screen stack is increasing. When I enter into the function module, functional function module added to the stack. When I came out, it removed from the stack. 
then I show you the same thing through this particular subroutine program. In the next video, we will understand what is standard desktop. We will understand also, can I rename this desktop? Yes, and plus we will understand by default, if I want to set a desktop, how we can do. So all these questions will be answered in the next video. So that's it in this video. Thank you.